This is week three of my winter break of 2017. Last week, my second week of my winter break, I was in California for a little bit. I spent a little bit of time in Santa Clara. I visited their Central Park. It was really beautiful and I walked around there for a little bit. And then I went to their public library that's right beside their park and I was looking through their art books and I found this really great book on LePage or LePage. It's probably pronounced LePage. And I found this really interesting sketch. I really like how this body's posed with the seeing the tops of the shoulders with the, the head down like that I think is really interesting. So I think I'm definitely going to steal that someday for a painting. And then I spent the rest of my day at Main Street Bagel and I was reading this book and I ended up finishing this book. And I think this is one of those that, well, I'm definitely, I want to reread it. I'm going to not reread it right away because I have uh, other books that I'm into right now. But I'm definitely going to go back and review this one. This was really good. This book really, really clicked with me. The Painter in Oil. And I think this book is one of those books that you can find a PDF online. I think it's in the public domain for free. I'm not sure on that, though. But so this book is split into four different parts. The first part is on materials. Second part, general principles. Third part, technical principles. And the fourth part is practical application. And so I found that's what I was reading mostly during this trip was the, the fourth part and finishing up through that. And I just feel like that's super applicable for me right now as I'm finishing up school. So it started off with, um, in the fourth part for pra practical application, there was a section on representation and capturing things representationally and kind of when you apply detail and when you don't and so I found that very interesting and also uh, there's a section on the sketch and the study and then procedure in a picture and dividing those into three different parts so um, I, I found these three sections really helpful with how to, I can be planning out my more complex paintings and it just made it seem more possible on how to do it. So I was talking about a sketch and treating a sketch as something that you get done very quickly because you're just focused on one idea. So in an image there might be a sketch where you're just focused on color and that's all you pay attention to is the color structure. Another sketch might be the light in the picture and that's all you're paying attention to or a sketch that's on movement of poses or the big masses, but um, he's talking about how you can have a hundred different sketches for one painting, um, but it, the, the main thing is that it's supposed to be simplified into just one idea that you're expressing. And then, talk, <clears throat> then talking about the, the study, and so the study is something that'll take longer, and you're, this, the point of the study is to really understand an object that you want to be representing in paint. So you're really focusing on how to paint the thing in getting the right color, detail, to get the, the feeling of the material and all of that. And it's so basically you're doing the study to make sure that when you go and paint the thing in the, the end picture and showing it simply enough where you have details where they need to be but then it, it can fade away and every brush stroke that you're putting down really represents the feeling of that object that you want. And then uh, finally talking about then the procedure in a picture so then how you get your your finished picture. <laughs> and there's a lot of other sections in that fourth part where it's talking about um, putting it all into practice but yeah this book I really really recommend it. Um, it was really good, really clicked with me, and I'm definitely going to be um, going back and reviewing this. After Santa Clara, we drove to San Francisco, and again, we were only here for a really short amount of time, so I really spent most of my time in the Legion of Honor Museum. They were having a show on Klimt and Rodin, which was really cool to see. I've never seen Klimt's work in person before, and I really like it. Um, that's some, you know, abstract expressionism, if that's the right term, that 
I like because he seems really competent with painting and he knows how to paint and he knows the technique behind it. So I really get the feeling that when he is making these choices of uh, kind of pulling back from making it naturalistic, he's doing it for a certain type of expression, not because he doesn't know um, how to do it. So yeah, I really enjoyed his work. Um, and then in the gift shop, they had a big Tashin book. I love Tashin, that publisher, on all of his work. So um, I'm going to put that in my wish list and maybe buy that book someday so I can look at more of his work. And then uh, Rodin stuff, obviously. I'm in love with Rodin. So that was really cool getting to see those pieces. There were some pieces there that I hadn't seen before. This one in particular of the three shades. I've seen this sculpture before, shrunken down, and then um, right now there's a show happening in Chicago with Rodin and it has one of the shades and th that one is life-size. But um, I haven't seen them all life-size, all three of them together before. And the really interesting thing was the, the vantage point of it because the sculpture is really high up. So if I get to this one corner of the sculpture and I get right under it and look up, the three shades are, they all make eye contact with me and this really interest, like their bodies are contorted differently and making this really intense look towards the viewer since you're standing under them so much. Really, really interesting. I think that's something that I'm probably going to steal in the future as well for pulling that in a painting somehow. And then I saw this painting of a lightning storm. I thought this painting was really, really cool. <laughs> um, it's definitely one of the most interesting expressions that I've seen of lightning, how the white paint where it shows the lightning strike, where it almost looks heavy, which I feel like it does like with, when the lightning kind of hangs in the sky when, when you see lightning strike. So um, really like this. I thought this looked really interesting. And then there was this painting, which was my favorite painting in this museum. It's the size of a wall. It's massive. And it's... There's, there's just so much going on with it in the sense that there's so much going on story-wise by all the figures and how they're posed and there's so much you could read into literally what you're seeing. That's what's being acted out in this. But then also the painting just keeps giving back not only story-wise but also with how things are painted in very different ways in the painting and very interesting ways. So the way that the carpet is painted is different than all of the fabric and the the skin is all really tight on all the figures for the most part there's some parts in that the hands for figures that are off um uh in the, the periphery of the picture where it is painted a little bit more loosely but n not in any way that the the fabric of things are painted really loosely so the skin's all pretty tight like you get up to that and it doesn't break apart at all but the the fabric and well pretty much everything else it's so interesting because when you when you get up really close to it you see how it there's so much broken color and the paint strokes are like so deliciously thick with how it's painted and it almost looks um almost the coloring when you get up to it almost looks messy in the sense that it's broken color and almost slightly dirty in some areas. But when you just step just a few feet back, like you, that's like when you're right up close to it and then you step back a little bit and everything just locks into place and it gives this really graceful, perfectly clean colors everywhere with the uh, illuminated light throughout it. So, oh, it's, it's, I love it. I was so pleasantly surprised. I've never seen this painting before or this painter. And um, yeah, I spent most of my day just uh, sitting in front of this painting. It is so massive though, that when I get up to it, um, I wish that, I mean, I'm pretty low when I get up to it. I wish that there was stairs that I could go up or scaffolding that I could really get up and study, study the, um, the painting more at a, a higher vantage point towards it. But Man, this painting, it was so cool seeing how just, there's so much, there's so much detail all the way throughout this painting, but it's not detail that is distracting at all. It's, it all, all the detail in it really supports the one thing that the painting is saying, which is 
a girl that's getting dressed for a really wealthy wedding and you see her expression and she doesn't seem like she's excited for it and you see the man which is probably her husband that's a lot older or going to be husband that's walking in and they're kind of pushing him out of the room uh, uh, it was such it's such a cool pa painting there's so many emotions on all of their faces that some people are excited for the wedding some aren't you see the mother is crying and her little brother that's sitting down eating a cookie or something is completely oblivious to what's going on he's probably too young to understand he's just happy that he has a cookie so yeah this painting was so so cool and I'm really glad I got to see it I also met a new friend at the museum named Oscar hi Oscar and also um, a museum guard named Robert that was just kind of taking me around and giving me his insight for the different histories of the painting. So I had a really, really good time. I've never been to that museum before. If you're in San Francisco, uh, yeah, I definitely recommend it. It's also on a hilltop, so it's a really beautiful walk up to see the museum as well. It was really cool. And then I came back to Chicago, and so this week, the third week of the winter break, I've really been um, mostly, I've been spending a lot of time working on my Solomon J. Solomon master copy. When I'm not doing that, um, I'm sketching. I've got some ideas that I'm kind of working out for some future paintings, which I'm super excited about, and reading some other art books. But so for the Solomon J. Solomon thing, I'm really, the pictures that I took, they aren't the best. I think there's some blurry ones. Or it's, it's like the camera phone is over contrasting what I'm doing. So they don't look super great, which I think probably also just brings out that my, um, my edges are a little bit too sharp as well because I think that's being, it's making it, the camera, it's not, it's not as sharp in real life, but the camera's making it really obvious, which is good. So I know that I need to um, uh, work on edges and softening up uh, some values and colors and stuff so things don't look so sharp. But what I'm doing is I'm really focusing on just the figure Solomon and working on, I think I mostly worked on the the lighter values, some shadows. I haven't really worked on the hand that's holding himself like right here. Those deeper flesh colors, I haven't really gotten to those yet. Um, but I've just been working around and I don't know, it's, it's really tricky. I'm finding it really tricky resolving him, but I'm trying to just, we'll just keep painting and figuring it out as I go. I know something that I've definitely been that I do that I did a lot was that if I'm having trouble with something I will kind of I'll take a break and I'll stare at the painting for a while and try and like think how I can make it better or I just get frustrated so I'll go in the lounge and um, take a break but I'm really trying not to not to do that because I think I don't think it's something that I can necessarily think my way out of I think it's just lack of experience with paint to get to paint make the painting look like how Solomon J. Solomon made it look. So I'm just um, just keep I'm just keeping on painting <laughs> with it. Um, but it's so much fun, even though I feel like there's certain areas where I don't really know quite how to. I'm not happy with them yet, but it's so much fun to paint. And I love that the figure is so big, and I get to use big brush strokes. And um, yeah, it's so much fun to paint. So also. So originally, my idea was that I wanted to get this big, huge painting done by the time that I finished up being a student at the Ravenswood Atelier, which would be in May. And I'm thinking that I know if, if I kept that goal, I could do it. Because I know myself that I would just like buckle down and make sure that I get it done. But I think if I do that, I'd be really unhappy. And I think the painting would suffer as well. So. My new mindset for this is that I'm still going to work on this a reasonable amount and see how much I can get done while I'm a, a student here, especially under Matt and Magda's guidance so they can give me tips and advice on um, how to work on this guy. But I think it's, it's, it'll be better that I think what I'm going to do, or I know what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take the painting with me wherever I go when I'm done being a student and it'll just be something that I work on while I'm either in between my own projects or just taking a break from my own projects because I think it'll be good for me working on a masterpiece like this while I'm also setting up my own routine out of school.